you gonna talk to the people or what? I'm tired still. So. <laughs> <laughs> we just ran up the stairs four levels from the mall. I tried to cast the devil out of my feet. <laughs> Cause they were talking back like Negro, you need to lose some weight, and I like in the in the name of Jesus, you shit about a hundred da, 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 something like that. Anyway, mall entry. How do we get out of here? I think we go this way. I think this says only this way. No, it says mall entry that way. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Why the what the, the arrows is only pointing one way? Okay. So what are we talking about today in this rant? Um, demonic territories. What do you consider demonic territories? Um, okay. How I see it is, uh, like certain areas, like, for example, um, certain areas have, like, a lot of high crime. Okay. Um, or killings. Okay. Um, and I feel like that may be where, uh, it may be a demonic territory, like where, you know, the devil resides in that area. Mm -hmm. um, even s down to like certain places we attend or events that we attend or places we go to. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, right? At the light, turn right, then turn left onto Garden friend, State Plaza Way. And they were celebrating their birthday and they explained to me that they were going out uh, to a certain lounge and now in this lounge um, they said it was called playground so I, I, I asked them I said playground and I laughed I'm like okay like whose playground is it that's a good question yeah so it had me thinking after like I finished talking to them it had me thinking like wow like we often don't we're not considerate of the things that we uh at the stop sign, turn left onto Garden State Open Plaza Way. Open up to? Mm -hmm. Um, like... In a quarter mile, turn left onto Ikea Drive. Is, he gonna t is she gonna talk the whole time? Like, Sarah, you're interrupting me while I'm talking. That is very rude. We're gonna have to shut you up. <laughs> okay, we're back. Yeah, don't ask us what happened. Something happened. I don't know. Okay, we're back. But, um, yeah, so to make long story short, um, you know, like I said, I just feel like, um, certain areas it, it uh, possesses a certain energy or spirit um i don't even like using the word energy but spirit um like for example you have uh camden new jersey i know that i'm from that area so i know like the type of high crime that they have that's like one of the cities that has the most high crime in the area of new jersey um, then you have Philadelphia too, like that's right next to Camden. They call it Killadelphia. See, Killadelphia, like where do y'all get that from? And that's what happens in that area, like people are always dying, like non-stop, like young children dying all the time. And um, Chicago is another one. Chirac. Yeah, so it's like, it just made me think of that, like certain areas, like why is it, uh, so much crime in these areas where you go to like go past this light then at the Compton, next one Compton too like that's another area that straight out of Compton yeah like and then like you'll go to like uh okay for example right I had went on a trip and I went to Arizona now I'm from Camden New Jersey everybody's mad aggressive um that's just the type of atmosphere, atmosphere is, is, is is there so I went to Arizona and as we're traveling, we're talking to people, networking and meeting new people. And literally it's like the okay, people we, this. yeah. Okay. Like, does anybody love their life today? <laughs> um, but yeah, as we're like meeting people and stuff, I've realized I'm like, man, these people are like really nice out there. Like, I don't know what it is. That's like, they're so nice. Like. So let me just give you some insight. Um, 17, 8, Garden State Park. People are a product of their natural environment. And we're also products of our spiritual environment. And even with that considered, we're also subject to the principality or the power that is ruling over an area. Poverty 
criminality and lack, they normally go together. That means there's a, a particular principality that govern these areas. Like where I live in Northern Jersey, uh, in, in Livingston slash West Orange, we joke around that, man, we wish we could go to the bodega because at seven o'clock, ain't nothing open. And then one night, me and my niece Shelby decided we're going to Wawa, shout out to Wawa's. And it took us an hour and a half to go eight minutes. Just to get to one Wawa? We got lost. And then we kept on getting lost. But I'm saying that to say, we were the only car on the road in these communities, no cars but the police. So soon the police saw us, he jumped on our tail. Why? Because people in that community are not outside at 1.30 in the morning. Okay? He didn't pull us over, he didn't stop us, but we didn't fit in to the climate of the community. So now more affluent communities, they just commit different types of crime. They don't normally commit crimes where violence is involved, where uh, drug-related crimes or crimes that stem from poverty and lack. So when we're talking about certain communities and the spirits that govern these places, we got to understand that not only we're subject to our own personal upbringing, our own family dimension, the community in which we were socialized in, but the spiritual governing body that is over that area. I want to shout out to my people in Atlanta. What is Atlanta known for? It's the African American gay capital of the world. Why is that? There has to be some principality that is governing that area. Let me ask you this. There's tons of churches over there. How come the spiritual atmosphere hasn't changed? Why? Because we don't capitalize on the power and authority that we have. I'm just gonna say that. And we, yeah, we don't know. Like we don't know that the the power and authority that God has given us is harder for us to understand it and then also use it. Like if you're not surrounded by people that actually do know, how are you gonna know? Like. And it's that too, like, all right, I got tons of friends that complain to me about, oh, well, uh, I just want this already, and I just want to have a Benz already, and I just want to have the, the, the my business already, okay. And I go and ask them, like, what is, what your, is, plan? What is your plan? Oh, well, uh, I'll, do, I'll think about it after I'm done smoking. Okay, well, tomorrow then came, you ain't think about it, and you got distracted because you were smoking. So it's like... And then not only that, it's like, how are you going to, like I said, how are you going to do that if you're not surrounded, you don't have a plan one, and then you don't have, you don't surround yourself around people that is going in that same direction. Like, for me, when I made the decision, okay, uh, I'm going to serve Christ and I want my business to revolve around him and glorify him, um, I stopped hanging around people that was, that was uh, not going in that direction and I started hanging around more people that was going in that direction why because iron sharpens iron and I'm not going to hang around uh, people that's going to make me dull or I don't want people around me to you know what I'm saying to make me dull or I make them dull like I'm not I'm not pouring into you if you're not uh I guess you could, if we're not in the same lane I guess you was you could say like, I, I, well you know we look at some of these adages that you know we've heard from our parents, birds of a feather flock together and these type of things. These things are true because you would never see a pigeon with a chicken hawk or a chicken hawk with an eagle or an eagle with a crow or a crow with a dove. So you become simply by uh, climate or simply by, simply by territory or association like the people that you're around. And that also has spiritual a spiritual dimension that we don't often think about. It is hard to be in a church that is infected with the Spirit of God and not get infected too, okay? If you're in a dead church and you keep crying out for more, staying in that church is not gonna change. You're gonna have to surround yourself with people, a church, men and women of God that are making moves in the realm of the Spirit so you can emulate them as they emulate Christ. So association sometimes will cause people to get into the stupor so the old adage that we think means nothing, a lot of these foundational truths come from the realm of the spirit and are from God. It's just, oh, just voice your opinion. Say what you think. Um, 
that's really it. That's all I had to talk about as far as that topic. I don't know how to say it. Just say it. I don't know how to say it. Just say it. I don't know how to say it. Just say it. I don't know how to say what I want to say. Okay, my mind actually just kind of went off. Um, but, um, because I had just seen that car, right? Well, not that car, but the motorcycle. It just reminded me of something. Um, I think the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about it, but it's like, I... I don't know how to talk about it. So if he's prompting you to talk about it, then ask him to give you the words. Okay, Holy Spirit, I ask that you give me the word, uh, the right words to say uh, and talk about what I'm thinking and what's on my mind. Okay. So, all right. So, growing up as a child, I was. Um, and it, like I said, this just kind of threw me. This might be a little bit on the topic. We might have to edit a little bit. But growing up as a child, I was one child that um, grew up with one parent, right? Of course, I had uh, two parents, but I grew up with one. I had just my mother. I always lived with my mother. My father wasn't really around. He wasn't um, always in the scene um, and, and practically didn't raise me. Um, my mother raised me. My grandmother raised me. Uh, my auntie and my uncles, they raised me. And growing up, I wanted to talk about that too. Like children like myself that grow up with like one parent or no parents. Um, I feel like, okay, I heard this saying one time that um, sometimes your biological parents may be the people that uh, are able to like get you in the into the world mm -hmm. but there might be like the vehicle that gets you into the world but they may not be the vehicle that's gonna take you through your life courses in the world if that makes sense absolutely makes sense um so i thought about that and i started to reflect on my my situation like how i haven't i only grew up with literally just my mom um and my mom taking care of me all the time and i thought about it and i'm like wow like Cause one day I was upset. I was like, man, like I really wish that me and my my biological father uh, relationship was where it should be. And you know, I know he got a whole bunch of other kids. We're all family and we talk, but it's like rare. And then it's like, you know, um, I guess you could say my question would be like, how can you, uh, Holy Spirit, help me? <laughs> how can you? Um, How can you like uh, build with someone um, that you kind of like? You, it's, it feels almost as if you they're like you want to build more than they want to build. If it's not mutual, mm -hmm. but you know for a fact they like the well, They say that they love you, but it's kind of not really proven. If that makes sense, because from my standpoint, it's kind of like. Um, yes, I'm very much grateful that I have you in my life as a father because you get to show me that, you know, what a father should really be doing, like, and, and how he should uh, uh, be parenting a, 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 a daughter um, and guiding a daughter and stuff like that. And even what a man should be like, you know what I'm saying? So... I never really had that, so I'm very much grateful for that. But I also want to know, like, if my relationship is closed off with my biological father, and it's like I want to be able to at least build it, how can a person go about that if it's not as mutual? Like, do I just like, okay, I'm just going to keep praying for you and just hope that you, you know, one day come to your senses after 40-something years and I'm only 22 and, you know, it's never been a thing where it happens and it's been an ongoing thing like you know like how do you how do you initiate that or how do you like go about that well i think the first thing that must be considered is prayer right. right because i used to be really critical of my relationship with my father and my mother to a certain extent and then you realize that a lot of times they don't know how to be parents because they were never parented. Mm -hmm. 
or they experience trauma that leaves them at a deficit to want to reach out and understand what love is and how to show love. So knowing that the, the, the example of love is always Christ and knowing our, uh, that our Heavenly Father, how He parents us and how He father, fathers us is what we should look for. But at the same time, there is no guarantee that your earthly parents will even understand or attempt to reach out to you in that way. And we're not going to fault them. We're not going to toss them to the side. But the Bible says that when a mother and father forsakes us, that Jesus picks us up. I'm thankful to have you in my life because I don't have any biological kids. But at the same time, I get to pour into you uh, because you need being poured into at, at, at the age that you are. Uh, you need to experience what love's what love looks like? How you doing? All right. What? About what? Oh, the shirt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he like the second I'm person. Like, did I offend this guy or something? <laughs> right, I'm looking like, wait, what happened? Like, I forgot I was wearing this shirt. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. So listen, we can't throw the parents away. And neither we can be too judgmental uh, concerning them and their efforts or lack thereof of parenting us. But what we have to do is take a life blessings and say, when I grow up, when I have my child, these are the things that happen to me that I'm not going to do. Nevertheless, you love your parents just the same because, like you said, without them, there is no way of getting into this world. Yeah. Even our Lord Jesus Christ had to come to the womb of a woman. So that is the entrance, the entrance point into this world for all human beings. Now, this is where, as a church, as a community, that we have to make sure that the children who don't have fathers, uh, we partake in the instruction as far as their life is concerned. Now, would that be considered like evangelism? Well, well, evangelism is always telling the story of Jesus Christ in an effort to get people to convert and be saved. Because, well, you know, that's what they, I think, or no. I think that's the term like evangelist like don't you think what, that's what they call them in the church like an evangelist a person that goes out and preaches the gospel for jesus christ or a missionary that goes to different countries and uh provide the needs of the people whether it be uh resources or spiritual stuff yeah but i believe that um as members in the body of christ anywhere that we see a lack that we should attempt to fill it you know some of us have extra time some of us we live in houses and we occupy one bedroom and we won't even take take young children off the street or offer to help or support. Some of us are so uh, 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 tied up in our monetary and, and, and our financial things that we don't want to give up our substance. And sometimes it's not even that our substance is necessary, but it's time. Time is very important when you sew into somebody. Like when we spend time, we make videos, you help me with all my stuff, I try to help with your stuff, we talk all the time, I check on you in the morning, you check on me, uh, you got Maddie, Maddie, our prophet Maddie Wilson, uh, you got Sister Zena, Dr. Zena Pierre, and these people are willing to sew yeah. into you. Why? Because we know what it's like to have questions or feel a certain way and there's nobody you can talk to or maybe sometimes a relationship with your mom or your dad is not what it is so you can't tell them what your heart feels because the first thing they do is become judgmental instead of just hearing your heart i think as adults sometimes we forget what it's like to be a child an adolescent a young a young a young person and the things and the struggles that we've gone through that others have helped us overcome so we should do our part in helping people to, to mature. And even as a child, like, cause like, I would say my mom is very humble and she kind of, she always tries to put herself in uh, the child's position too. Like my position too, I know my child, but <laughs> try to put herself in my position too. And she like very understanding. Um, and that's why I'm like grateful for her too, because it's like, you don't get that. That's rare. You don't get that from a lot of people either you know so i'm very much grateful for that too like i feel like my mom just she uh is a blessing man like to be able to take care of two kids through all these years by yourself, by yourself man. but yeah um i just wanted to talk about that that's really all i had that's all we got <laughs> yes all right i just want to say this y'all if you like 
the rants, you like the, the let's pray and all the other content that we produce, I suggest that you subscribe, share this information with other people so we can continue to get this word out. People need prayer, they need intercession. So this is Wayne and this is Shanine from Deliverance Chronicles. We're going to shout at you maybe in a week or so. Yes. God bless y'all.